Well, hello, hello, good morning, good morning. It is Wednesday, December 28th, as we join together this morning for our daily devotions here with Pastor Sutton. Glad to have you here with me on this Wednesday. Overcast, dreary. It's uh, not snowing and it's not raining. Um, Temperature is in the teens or higher. I'm looking at my computer here. It says 22. I think that's a little higher than reality. Something interesting that I've noticed with my computer, and I uh, that because of the Starlink connection, the it's called point of presence, which is where the where the central location is that my system's talking to. And most of the time that is in Chicago, although it, it does jump around depending on, no, wait, the point of presence never changes. It's what, it's what the earth station is that the satellite's talking to. Um, but my IP address, it links back to uh, the point of presence in Chicago. And so whenever I do a search or something like that, the computer always thinks I'm in Chicago uh, or in the Chicago area. Uh, so I, I don't know. I, I think I manually put Irma in for weather and told it not to. Oh, we have lightly polluted air. Figure that out. Um, yeah, I have I have it locked to my zip code for my weather. Um, you know, that little, that new thing that my Windows did where they have the little weather and news tab down at the bottom. That's locked to to where I'm at. So, so good morning. Um, this morning, a, a commemoration, the Holy Innocents, um, uh, today, uh, somewhere here, here we go. The Holy Innocents martyrs. I didn't comb my beard very well today and it's kind of, I've got hairs all over. Matthew's gospel tells of King Herod's vicious plot. I get it. Plot against the infant Jesus after being tricked by the wise men. Threatened by the one, the, the one born king of the Jews, Herod murdered all the children in and around Bethlehem who were two years old or younger. That's Matthew 26 verse, or Matthew 2 verse 16. Um, these innocents commemorated just three, three days after Jesus' birth remind us not only to of the terrible brutality of which human beings are capable, but more significantly of the persecution Jesus endured from the beginning of his earthly life. Although Jesus's life was providentially spared at this time, many years later, another ruler, Pontius Pilate, would sent, sentence innocent Jesus to death. So today we commemorate the Holy Innocence martyrs. Um, just a comment as I was reading that. You know, when you when you read materials, and I don't care where the material comes from, uh, where the where the text is coming from, what book it's in that you're reading, when you're doing, when you're thinking uh, about scriptures and you're thinking theologically, you're thinking about God and and what it means for you or I. Words matter, and the use of words matter, and how they're put together matter, okay? It, it, it matters. Um, and what you say and how you say it matters. That's why I'm always careful in writing my my sermons and such. But here, I said something differently than the way it's written in, in, my, in my treasury here on the, on the note about the uh, Holy Innocence. And, and that is this. Um, the, the book has this text. Let me read this text to you and see if you see the difference. These innocents com commemorated just three days after the celebration of Jesus' birth remind us not only of the terrible brutality of which humans are capable, but okay. The word celebration is in there. Uh, three days after the celebration of Jesus' birth. Now, why is that important? Because what I said is just three days after Jesus' birth, right? Now, certainly it can just be an innocent statement, you know, the celebration of Jesus' birth, right? Well, when do you celebrate that? Well, on the day of his birth. But in another way, 
In another way, it can point to something that the author was thinking that perhaps the the date of December twenty uh, fourth, twenty fifth, born the night of uh, the twenty fourth, celebrated on the twenty fifth, but perhaps the writer doesn't believe that. And there were there were um, there were people. There are people today who uh, look and search for the real date of Jesus' birth, right? What's the real, well, he must have been born in March because the in order for the seasons to be what they say they are in the, in the area of Judea and Bethlehem, then it had to be in March. And so we've just, we took Saturnalia and we made it the holiday because the Roman Empire, blah, 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 BS. When the church established December 25th as the birth of Christ, that, that, that date is Christmas, Christmas, Christ Mass, right? Christ, the Mass of Christ, Christ Mass, Christmas. It didn't go, well, now we need to find a holiday that the pagans are using and make it our own. No. They said, well, let's see. We know when the Annunciation was to the mother of Jesus, Mary. Let's go nine months after that. Not difficult to figure out. And that's December 25th. And no, they didn't go, we have it on December 25th. Let's back it up nine months for the Annunciation. The Annunciation of Jesus was established prior to the celebration of his birth. So, December 25th. It's not just the day that we celebrate Jesus' birth. See, and there's the thing. It's not just the day that we celebrate his birth, but it is the day of our dear Savior's birth. There, rant off. But you got to watch for these things because sometimes they're subtle. And, and subtle things lead to other subtle things, lead to other subtle things. And all of a sudden you're reading Galatians chapter 3, verse 28, that says that there is, uh, there is neither Jew nor Greek, uh, man nor woman, nor free uh, nor slave, or slave nor free uh, in Christ, right? And all of a sudden you've got people saying, oh, well, once we're Christians, male and female doesn't matter. Well, spiritually it doesn't matter, but it matters very, very much in the physical world, in, in, in the world in which we live. And, and God made them man and woman, male and female. Okay, rant off. Let's get down to the brass tacks. Let's see who's here today. And I've got to refresh my screen while I've been yammering here. Some of you may have come in and I wouldn't see that uh, because it just doesn't seem to be refreshing for some reason. All right. Uh, Bob and Jeannie, good morning. Geraldine and Neil, hello. Jerry, good morning. Ashley, good morning. Oh, you poor thing. You know, you've got a lot of Facebook accounts, dear. Um, then it, then it jumped on me. Mushtak, good morning. Renee, good morning. There's uh, Jill and John, good morning to you. And Ashley says 21 in Wausau. Okay, all right. All right, yeah, I've got 22 here, so maybe. Usually we're cooler than Wausau, not warmer, but, um, and I didn't look at the the actual thermometer on the wall outside. Okay, that's everybody that has shown up in my comments thus far. So let's uh, let's move on from here and get into our, uh, to the brass tacks of what we're doing here. If you have, a, I have my daily treasury daily prayer here. If you have Lutheran Service Book 295, page 295, daily prayer, individuals and families, the morning order as we begin here each, uh, each I'd say each Lord's Day, because every day is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice in it and be glad. <clears throat> All right. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. December 28th was where we're at here today. 
the uh, holy innocents celebrated in our psalm today, Psalm 9, verses 11 through 14. Psalm 9, 11 through 14. Oh, sing praises to the Lord who sits enthroned in Zion. Tell among the peoples his deeds, for he who avenges blood is mindful of them. He does not forget the cry of the afflicted. Be gracious to me, O Lord. See my affliction from those who hate me. O you who lift me up from the gates of death, that I may recount all your praises, that in the gates of the daughter of Zion I may rejoice in your salvation. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. That I may recount all your praises, that in the gates of of the daughter of Zion, I may rejoice in your salvation. See my affliction from those who hate me, O you who lift me up from the gates of death. No, I mean, it's salvation, right? Sing praises the Lord, tell his deeds. Be gracious to me, O Lord, see my affliction. It's really just, it's it's really a, a prayer, a psalm, a prayer, a song, calling on God to see the affliction that we suffer, knowing that he will, and knowing that when he does, we rejoice in the salvation received through Christ Jesus, the birth of Jesus, the life of Jesus, the suffering of Jesus, the death and resurrection of Jesus. It's all about Jesus. Yeah, let's let's go on. Isaiah 52, verse 13. Wait, I thought I, yeah, I typed in 14. It starts at 13, I guess. Oh, we ended with 12 yesterday. All right, so I just saw 13, thought 14. You know, I put these things up before I've had my coffee. Don't always think clearly at that point. Isaiah 52, 13. 5410. Behold, my servant shall act wisely. He shall be high and lifted up and shall be exalted. As many were astonished at you, his appearance was so marred beyond human semblance, and his form beyond that of the children of mankind. So shall he sprinkle many nations. Kings shall shut their mouths because of him, for that which has not been told them they see, and that which they have not heard they understand, who has believed what he has heard from us. And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him and no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And as one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. <clears throat> he was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that is that before its shearers is silent, so he opened not his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away. And as for his generation who considered that he was cut off out of the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people, and they made his grave with the wicked and with the rich man in his death, although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him. He has put him to grief. When his soul makes an offering for guilt, he shall see his offspring. He shall prolong his days. 
The will of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Out of the anguish of his soul he shall see and be satisfied. By his knowledge shall the righteous one, my servant, make many to be accounted righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will divide him a portion with the many, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out his soul to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many and makes intercession for the transgressors. Sing, O barren one who did not bear. Break forth into singing and cry aloud, you who have not been in labor. For the children of the desolate will be more than the children of her who is married, says the Lord. Enlarge the place of your tent and let the curtains of your habitations be stretched out. Do not hold back. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes. For you will spread abroad to the right and to the left, and your offspring will possess the nations and will, and will people the desolate the cities. Fear not, for you will not be ashamed. Be not confounded, for you will not be disgraced. For you will forget the shame of your youth and the reproach of your widowhood you will remember no more. For your maker is your husband, the Lord of hosts is his name, the Holy One of Israel is your Redeemer, the God of the whole earth he is called. For the Lord has called you like a wife deserted and grieved in spirit, like a wife of youth when she is cast off, says your God. For a brief moment I deserted you, but with great compassion I will gather you. In overflowing anger for a moment I hid my face from you, but with everlasting love I will have compassion on you, says the Lord your Redeemer. This is like the days of Noah to me, as I swore that the waters of Noah should no more go over the earth. So I have sworn that I will not be angry with you, and I will not rebuke you. For the mountains may depart and the hills be removed, but my steadfast love shall not depart from you, and my covenant of peace shall not be removed, says the Lord, who has compassion on you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. There's a lot there. Um, this is the suffering servant. This is uh, the the crucifixion um, within the context of Isaiah. Um, you you hear this read uh, during Lent uh, during. Um, the last weeks of Lent, the last days of Lent, even on, on Good Friday, I believe. He shall be high and lifted up and shall be exalted. Right there, the cross, right? In the same way that the serpent is lifted up, the fiery serpent, the bronze serpent in the wilderness of Moses, so the Son of Man shall be lifted up. This is the exaltation of God. I mean, this... It, 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 it's the most horrific thing that you and I probably can think of, but it's the most beautiful thing that God knows. Because his only begotten son gave his life for you, for, for his creation, for you, right? For the ones that Isaiah is speaking to. As many were astonished at you, his appearance was so marred beyond human semblance and his form beyond that of the children of mankind. Think about that. As Jesus is taken to the cross. Now Isaiah is writing this literally centuries before Christ was born. Um, about six, seven hundred. Uh, and yet, here it is. And if, if you can imagine Jesus, he's been before Caiaphas and Pilate and Herod. He's been beaten. He's been flogged. He's had the crown of thorns placed upon his head. I mean, his body is shredded, bruised, broken, marred. The truth is, what he suffered, no mere mortal could have suffered. K 
Kings shall shut their mouths because of him, for that which has not been told to them, they now see. And that which they not have not heard, they understand. Think of the centurion sitting at the base of Jesus' cross when he gives up his last. He says, this most certainly must have been the Son of God. Think of Pilate when he encounters Jesus. And as, as he's questioning Jesus, he begins to be afraid. In fact, his wife comes in, in one of the Gospels, Pilate's wife comes in and says, have nothing to do with this guy. In fact, at one point, Pilate seeks to release Jesus, right? It's, my, it's, it's your custom on the day to, uh, to free a man. Uh, so would you rather have Jesus or Barabbas? Barabbas. They call for the insurrectionist, the seditionist, and the murderer, sending the man of peace to his death. He grew up before him like a young plant, like a root out of dry ground. No former majesty that we should see him, no beauty that we should desire him. He, he wasn't shining. He wasn't an amazingly attractive person. His beauty was in the peace that he brought and the words that he spoke. And yet he was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. The son of man has no place. Foxes have dens and birds have nests, but the son of man has no place to lay his head. They hide their faces from him. When he's taken to the cross, they mouth at him, mock him. But he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, and we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, afflicted. Those watching this happen thought God is doing this to this man. But it was we, for he was wounded by, for our transgressions and crushed for our iniquity. Upon him was the chastisement that brings us peace. With his stripes we are healed. Like sheep gone astray, We've turned everyone his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. You know, this is it. In the, in the mouth of Isaiah, in the time prior to the Babylonian captivity, Isaiah speaks of what God is doing, what God is working. For the Lord has called you, like a wife deserted and grieved in spirit, like a wife of youth when she is cast off, says your God. For a brief moment I deserted you, right? The Babylonian captivity, the, the, the 400 and some years of silence between the Testaments, when none of the prophets spoke. But with great compassion I will gather you, right? The cross, lifted up and exalted, calls men to him. Calls them to the promise. In overflowing anger for a moment, I hid my face from you. But with everlasting love, I will have compassion for it on you. This is like the days of Noah to me. As I swore the waters of Noah should no more go over the earth, I have sworn that I will not be angry with you, and I will not rebuke you. For the mountains may depart and the hills may be removed, but my steadfast love shall not depart from you. My covenant of peace shall not be removed, says the Lord who has compassion on you. When we flee, when we turn from God and run, when we refuse and deny him, he denies us. But when we turn and call upon him in mercy, he hears our pleas and he answers them. I call to you, O Lord, see my affliction from those who hate me that I may rejoice in your salvation. Christ, for you. Amen. Let's go to our prayer of the day. Somewhere here. Here we go. Almighty God, the martyred innocence of Bethlehem showed forth your praise, not by speaking, but by dying. Put to death in us all that is in conflict with your, your will, 
that our lives may bear witness to the faith we profess with our lips. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Hey, Glenn, good morning. I see you popped in here, and I see Connie popping up too, uh, saying good morning. Uh, let's uh, continue with the Apostles' Creed this morning. And I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we are bold to pray as our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And for ourselves and others on this Wednesday, Lord of Light, thank you for this Wednesday. Grant that during this day we may contemplate your presence and see the path that you would have us take. You have a plan for our lives this week, and you are revealing it to us. Let your Spirit show us the path that our steps should take. Guide us in the darkness of our understanding so that the light of your word may inspire our thoughts. Lord of this day, may our activities correspond to your will. May we work for our families and give our best efforts so that our words and actions may be in accordance with your teachings, just as the sun brings light to the day and the moon brightens the night. May we be reassured that you guide and light the way so that we may live according to your will. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, be with those who suffer in body, mind, or soul. We ask on this Wednesday that you be with those whose bodies suffer the effects of age or illness, that the, the need for surgery or the passing through surgery uh, be, be for the benefit of those who receive your blessing. We ask wisdom for doctors and caregivers. Uh, we ask that all would be held within your care. Especially on this day, we pray for Pat, Lois, Anne, Brianne, Rose, Bob, Mike, Megan, Dan, Ezra, Neely, and all who call upon your most holy name. Grant them the peace that surpasses all understanding through your Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you, for into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, my friends, that brings our devotions to a close for today. God's peace be with you, and we'll see you back here. Boy, it's Thursday already tomorrow. Well, I got, I, I got all of Wednesday yet, so settle down. God's peace. We'll see you back here uh, yeah, tomorrow for our daily devotions. God's peace.